Hi guys, Steve here, and on this video I'm going to show you how to install the Extinction Server using the Server Creation Tool. So if this video is helpful for you, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you. If this is the first time you're setting up a server, you might want to watch my previous videos because I go into great detail on how to do it. This video will be a follow-on from those, so I'll assume you know what I'm talking about, but I'll try and recover the basics if you don't. Because I've already got the old server tool installed and set up, on this video I'll be showing you how to replace the old server setup tool with a new one. Then add a new map server. So you'll be able to install all the servers you want, even if this is the first time you're using a server setup tool. Then I'll be linking the extinction server to the other servers in a cluster so you can transfer between them. First you'll need a separate computer system to run all your servers on. You can use an old computer if it's good enough, or if you're looking to host your own blank dedicated virtual server that you can install Arc Survival to send it on, you can get a discount from a server company I'm partnered with, Ping Perfect, in a link in the description box below. Just use my referral code. Here's the specs and prices. Show menu in the top left shows it in dollars, pounds and euros. We've done the cheapest option to run one Arc map server, and when new DLC maps come out, you can upgrade later. But if you're not sure how many maps you want to run in the future, just talk to them beforehand and they'll help you out with the best server option for you. Links in the description box below. You'll get 10% discount on your first month if you use my promo code. One thing to note, a server company will help you out with any support you need to deal with your virtual private server, like how to access it or sort out any problems, etc. However, they will not and cannot help you with anything to do with setting up your Arc Survivor Sendered server files. That's because they're not allowed to, due to the exclusive deal Snail Games signed with their partner, to stop other server companies hosting Arc Survival Ascended. That's why we have to rent a virtual private server, then install all the Arc server files ourselves. So if you have any problems at all with your Arc Survival Ascended server not working, you will have to try and sort it out yourself by googling it, asking people on forums, friends, or you just working out and fixing the problem. If you're installing the server setup tool for the first time, you might want to skip to step 5, adding new servers at 13 minutes 40. For everyone else, I'll be replacing the old setup tool with a new version. Right, let's get started. First, step 1, installing the new server creation tool version. Because it's many months since I installed the last server, I forget some parts of what to do. So I have my last server guide video open to help me remember bits and jog my memory. This is my computer's desktop. I just minimalize that if I need it. You might be running off an old second machine, but I'm gonna to connect to my virtual private server by way of a remote desktop connection where I have my Arc servers installed on. There we go, and now we're looking at the desktop of my virtual private server. Now this is the old version of the server creation tool before Extinction came out. So if I click the plus button to add a new server, it'll bring up a window giving you the new server details that you need to add in. I've already got four servers running, so this will be my fifth. So I'm going to call it Server 5 Extinction. But because this is an old software version, before Extinction came out, when I go to Maps to choose which map I want to run on a server, Extinction is not there. That's why you need to install the new Arc Server Creation Tool software every time there's a new map. So remember that. So let's install the new updated software. Open your browser, then copy and paste the link I put in the description box of this video that takes you to the Server Creation Tool website page and download the latest version. It will download the zip file, go to the folder, then drag the zip file to my desktop. Close that and close that. Now create a new folder, drag the zip file in there. Then right mouse click and extract all to this folder. So there's all the files you need. I just drag that over to the right. Now we'll open our old server creation tool folder. I'll put that on the left. And that's all the program files we're using at the moment. So we're just going to back those up. Go to the desktop, create a new folder. I'll call it old. Drag all the files in there, just so we've got a backup. These are just the files to run the program, not your server files or saves that I'll show you in a minute. 
Right, on the new files, I'll just delete the zip file because we've already extracted everything from that. Now just select all the new files and drag them into the old server creation tool folder. It'll ask you if you want to replace those files. Click yes. Now double click and open the arc server creation tool. It may ask you to update your .NET. That's fine, download it now. The web page will open, .NET version 9.0 of Windows X64 installer. Once that's downloaded, double click on it. Pop-ups will appear, click run. Then click install. Close that window. Then close those windows. Then double click on the server creation tool again. It'll open up as everything's updated. And now when we try and add a new server, if you go to maps, you see we now have the extinction map added. Step two, adding a new server. So we just downloaded a new version of the Arc server creation tool. That program's up to date. So go to the folder it's kept in, double click on it to open it up. And there's my current servers. Click the plus button in the bottom left to add a server. The details window will come up. This will be my fifth server and it's extinction. So I'm gonna name it that. Now click on the install directory browse button. This is where the extinction server files are gonna be kept. And at the moment it's going to the wrong place. All my server folders are on a C drive. So I'm just gonna to go to C drive, there it is. And these are my server folders, holding all their map files and saves. So now we want to create a new folder for extinction. I'm gonna call it arc underscore ASA underscore extinction. Then click on it, and then click select folder. And that's the destination of where all the extinction files are gonna go. Click the browse button and you'll see the folder's empty at the moment as we've not downloaded anything. Next, go to maps and select the extinction map. Now we need to give this server a cluster ID number. All servers on your network must have the same cluster number. So they'll all show when you go to an obelisk and you can transfer between them. That's my cluster number. So I'm gonna give this extinction server the same. You'll need to make up your own cluster number. Otherwise you'll see other people's servers when you try and transfer. The main game port number needs to be different for each of your servers. So they all have different server addresses. Next, you wanna select a maximum number of players on your server. Let's go for 30. Mods we'll do in a little while, but for now, all our settings are fine. So click save. And you can see we've added our extinction server. Right, before we download all our server files, let me show you the empty destination folder at the moment. So I'm gonna to go to C drive. And this is what it looks like with all the server files downloaded on a map we've already got running. Then if we go to extinction folder, it's empty because we've not downloaded anything yet. Now go to the server creation tool and select extinction. Now click the update game files in the bottom middle and it'll start downloading every server file you need. And you can watch your folder filling up on the right. This will take a while and you should see download progress lines in the black window. But if you've waited five minutes and nothing's changed, close that black window or move it out of the way as you might have an error message. Ah, our depot downloader needs updating. So click yes. And there you go, it started downloading all the server files. This will take about 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna skip forward until it's mostly done. There you go, the window will shut down once it's finished. Then just to double check to make sure everything's fine, I do another update again. Everything has already been downloaded, so this is just checking that all the files are fine. So it'll go much quicker. Window closed down, and that's it. All the server files have been downloaded. Now we're just gonna check the extinction servers connected to the cluster folder. In the top right, click the config button. Click browse on the cluster data folder. If you've not made a server before, you'll need to make a folder called cluster data and link all your servers to it like this. As this is a temporary folder that your character, dinos and items get transferred to when you transfer between servers. Now we need to do our server settings. 
Step 3. Server Settings Have the Extinction Server selected, then click View Server in the bottom right. Pop-up window will open. Now your server doesn't have any config files at the moment. So click on the Open GUS INI config button. It will say there's no INI file and do you want to create one? Click yes. And it'll open a server settings file up in Notepad. Close that. Then click the Open Game INI config button. Again, it will say there's no file and do you want to create one? Click yes. That'll open up and it'll be empty apart from one line. Close that down. That just created the default settings for the server. And if you've not created a server before, you can change those settings to what you like. However, I've already done the settings I want on my other servers. So I'm just going to copy the settings files over. That's my Gus INI settings. And there's my game INI settings, which has your hatching and breeding ones. Right, let's find and copy my server files. I'll go to my computer. Go to C drive. You want to go to an existing server. Open that up. Go to shooter game. Saved. The config folder. Windows server. And there is both your INI files. All right, let's drag that to the side, as they're the ones in use that's going to replace the default ones. Now we go to Extinction Folder, Shooter Game, Saved, Config, Windows Server, and they're the new default files that hasn't got the settings I want. I'll open them up, see that one's blank apart from line, and the other file is the wrong settings as well. So you want to select both of those and delete them. And then copy your existing server setting files over, I copied, and then paste, close that window so we don't need it anymore, double check, there's all your hatching and breeding, and the game files, and most of the settings are correct, you just have to change one thing, scroll right down to the bottom, as you need to change your server name, the password's going to remain the same. You'll need to change that if you've not created a server before. When you're looking for a server in game, this is the name it will be. It says aberration because we copied that aberration settings file. So I've changed it to extinction. So that will show up in game and go to the top file and save. Close that down and you've done your server settings because you just copied most of them over. And close those windows down and that one. Now just to double check, we're going to click on the extinction server, then view server, click on the open GUS INI config, scroll down all the way down to the bottom, and you see the server's now called extinction. Open up the game INI config, and we have our breeding and hatching settings in there. Step 4, add mods. This one's going to be really quick and simple. Click server configuration in the top right. That'll open another window. And at the bottom we have a large box for mods. Then add mod underneath it. I'm going to copy the mod code for a server I've already got running. So select a server. Click on view server. Then the server configuration button in the top right. And those are the codes I use on my server. I've started using the Dino Tracker one. It won't let me copy and paste, so I'm going to have to type it in. So on the Extinction Server Configuration window, next to where it says Add Mod, type in the mod code. And once you've done, click Add Mod, and that mod will appear on the mods list. And click on Manually Define Launch Augments. So the mods work. Let's add the other mod code in as well. Click Add Mod, and there you go, adding mods is as simple as that. The odd part is trying to find the right code. Then click Save once you've done. Close your unwanted windows down. So we're back to the server updater. And then on the last part, Step 6, Final Bits and Updates. The extinction server is now up to date, but your other servers are a patch behind so we need to update them. Click that Open Updater button. Then go through and update all your other servers. It won't take as long as installing a full server, and it should be fairly quick unless it's a huge patch. Okay, to be honest, it's usually a huge patch. 
Once all your servers are up to date, let's make a folder for the extinction server save backup. Move these out away. All right, I've laid it out like this. The server creation tool, the server folders, then the backup folders underneath. So go to computer, go to C drive, go to extinction server folder, create a shortcut, drag it to your desktop, so that's a shortcut to the extinction server. That's all your servers set up. You can start them individually by clicking on them and click start server. Or you can click start all and it starts all the servers at once. You might get a window pop up saying a firewall rule doesn't exist. So click OK to create one. That's for your new extinction one. And all your servers will start up you'll get a black window showing all their data. So I just minimize those and lay them out better. When they're starting up, you'll get a yellow light in the bottom left. And when they're started up, it'll turn green. Everything's up and running now. So I can disconnect from my virtual private server, close that, and I'm back at my desktop. All you got to do now is log on to Arc, search for your server, log in and make sure it works. On a new server, I'd advise creating a new character, then transfer between other servers, just to make sure your cluster folder is connected properly. But don't transfer to a server where your character already is, otherwise it'll get overwritten and deleted. Don't forget if you don't want to deal with Nitrado servers anymore, you can run your servers from a good second computer, but it has to be on all the time when your servers are on. Or you can use the link in the description box below, get a discount and rent your own virtual private server, like I've done. And that's how you set up your own dedicated server cluster. So please show me it was worth making this video by liking, subscribing if you're not already, clicking the bell notifications on all to get notified when I upload and stream next, share this video with your friends, communities, forums, etc. There's links to my Patreon and merch store, as well as a link to get discount on a virtual private server. I'll put the links to everything in the description box below and to Ragon's server creation tool page. Thanks to him for making it. And I hope everything goes well for you and your server. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to check out the other videos at the end. Goodbye.